Hi and welcome to VFX Tutors, I'm Josh and in this video we'll be going through the process of setting up our camera in Maya for anamorphic footage from 3D Equalizer. So I've opened up Maya, so I'm just going to go File, not Export, I want to Import, I'm going to go to my camera, my mail script, or depends on what software you're using it might be different. So I'm going to import that in, I'm going to open up my scene group and I have the lens grid. You can delete that. You don't need that anymore. I'm just going to go panels, perspective, and look through my camera. And we can see we've got the original uh, image plate on there. So we want to switch that out for our undistorted one. So if we go to our attribute editor on our image plane shape, and we can select that file and select our undistorted plate. It doesn't matter which one. And we can see that it's still at the original um, aspect ratio. If we select open, it should automatically fit to our um, sensor size. And what we need to do is actually change our color space from raw, because now I'm starting to do everything in ACES CG, because that's just how most um, uh, companies work now. So it's I'll go through that at some point as well. That's another reason. That's another thing that I'll go through when I talk about a linear color space. So you start seeing it. Everyone's seeing everything in the same color. So we've got quite a vibrant shot. This is just shot from the straight off uh, my camera. So it's actually got quite a lot. It looks quite um, oversaturated, but that's just how it is. Um, so yeah, so we've done that. We've loaded an art our um, understorted plate. So what we can do next is just go to our perspective. And we can see our scene orientation isn't great. So what I like to do is if I just make a big plane. I can hide that. And I know the, that these points are on the floor. It's not going to be perfectly flat but we can still get a fairly good guess. And we want to try and get this on the ground. So we can probably just assume that this is relatively flat. Not perfectly flat, but... Within reason. So if we just look for our camera, can't really see much because we need to change our what we see through it. So if we select our camera on this camera icon, select our image plane shape, change our depth to one, and our alpha gain to 0 0.7. So now you should be able to see a ghosted version of it. So it looks shaded, wireframe shaded. We can now see that's pretty much working really nicely. Cool. So our next thing would be to sort this scale out. So if I just go back to perspective, and what I want to do is put this scene under the plane, because now I can scale it all together. And I do have a reference image. I forgot to use the tape measure, but um, for the scale size, the, the log is about the size of my foot, which is probably, I can't remember what that was. Probably, so the tape measure. 27. So I'm gonna make a cube. Make it 27 by 10, 10 by 5. So we're going to pretend that is my foot. <laughs> so that size is about that size of a foot. I'll, I'll upload the reference picture as well. So I believe that's the. If we go to our perspective and look for our camera, we can tear it off. Just so we can see them both. And we're going to use this point as a reference here. And 
I'm going to scale it up. Just going to do a rough scale up first. What I'm going to do, I'll snap this to that point. I'm just going to use it as a rough guide. So if that's my foot, we can see that's the scene scale is still massive. So it actually looks about roughly right, maybe a tiny bit too big. But you can always adjust this if it's not. It's good to get it in a sort of ballpark sort of area. It's always good, but the size of my foot was about the size of that that log. Cool. So you got a rough scale. If you look for a camera. So that's pretty good. Maybe even let's rotate the scene down slightly. Or maybe not. Let's leave it as that. I think that's right. It just looks a bit weird because there's no log there. So what we can also do, let's make some really rough geometry for this log. I'm not going to spend ages on this, but um if we just make a cylinder, hold V and snap it to that point, and we just scale it up. Let's rotate it down. There we can see that log's sort of in the right place. So what you can do, you can spend more time on this, but um, I'm just going to go through the basics. I will do it. I will do a. This is probably not the best shot to do a a modeling uh, modeling set geo because it's it's actually quite it can be quite complex with all these trees and stuff. But I can roughly just use the extrude. Pull it out. Then all, all I'm doing is using these locators as points of reference, making sure that they're always touching. Of all of these, this is it. this is definitely not the best one to do a uh, a modeling, <laughs> a match move modeling uh, tutorial because this log is uh, dependent on how tight you want it. You'll probably need to spend a lot of time on it, but just for basics, I am going to add rough geometry in there. Unfortunately, we don't have another point there, but let's try and make it a bit logical. Okay, we've got some pretty, we got a pretty rough, rough log there. And if we, if we look through, it's working pretty well. So let's do the other side. Like I said, all I'm doing is using the locators as reference points to find the correct depth. This might be a little bit more tricky because I haven't actually added that many in for this point. Kind of goes up and shrinks down a little bit as well. So I'm 
And obviously you can probably, if you take, spend a little bit more time on this, you'll get a much nicer result. And it would look better for your reels, but um, this could take quite a long time to get looking really nice. So it might be something you just want to spend some time on if you wanted to use it. This is just a very, very rough demonstration. And what we can do, we can just even just can duplicate this one. And let's just use it. You can make a new one if you want, but I'm just going to duplicate it and edit it, even as. So I'm just using, I'm going to use the edge loops to pull it around. I'm not too bothered that it's going through the floor. Looks like I can fix that. So, in hindsight, probably would have been easier to make a, a fresh new cylinder. But I've done it now. So let's push this back. Yeah, like I said, spend a little bit more time on it than I am. I will do I will do a, a proper sort of walkthrough on some basic modelling. Um, I just thought I'd better do something basic for this just to help you out if you wanted to use it. But, but I'm just all I'm doing making sure those points, those locators are touching the geo and it's all relatively in the correct space. It's fairly rough, but don't worry about it. Of course, cool, so now if we just go for our timeline, because it's working pretty well. We'll probably just And turn to show selection highlight. So it's just rough geometry. And I can just close that and just go to here. And yeah, spend more time modeling it. Uh, in fact, we need to do one more thing because we've got our scene under our plane. We need to press Shift P. That's Shift and P. And now we've got these transforms. So now we need to bake our camera because we can't have any transforms on the scene because if you export this out, your um, camera will revert back to the original position. So you need to go to Create locator, select your camera, then select the locator, go to rigging, constrain, point, then constrain, orient. So now if you select the locator and press F, we can see that our locator is now following it. So select your translations and rotations, go to edit, keys, bake simulation. So now we've baked the camera animation onto there. So that's our correct scale and position. So I'm saying if you exported this out now, effectively what you'd be doing, it'd export it out and take it out of the group. So it looks fine on that frame, but as soon as you move it, it pops back to its original position. 
So that's why we bake the animation onto this locator. Then what we'll do, the, we'll do the reverse. So now we're going to select the locator. Let's turn our shapes off. Select the locator, then our camera. If we could constrain, point, constrain, orient. Select our camera. Then we'll do the same again. Select all the keys, go edit, keys, bake simulation. So now we can delete that. And we can delete that locator. Now we have our plane and our really rough logs. We can freeze the transformations onto them. We can call control G, call that set geo. Set geo underscore group. And we can shift P that uh, point group out. And we can delete the scene. So now we can select all this. Control G. And we call that match move. So now we've tidied it up. We've got some rough geometry in there. Like if you want to make this better, you can. It's absolutely fine. I just wanted to do a quick, a very quick. Um, let's just scale this up. A very quick set geo. Cool. Then save that, and then um, you're pretty much done. And we'll do some more anamorphic shots with a little bit more difficulty. Um, but yeah, if you've enjoyed this tutorial, hit that like button and subscribe for more like this.